Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you another unboxing and overview. Today what we're going to be focusing on is one of the newest GPUs to come to the market which is NVIDIA's brand new GTX uh, 560 Ti 448 uh, version. Now this is a little bit different than the previous uh, GTX 560s that have come to market because there's an actual change in terms of the actual architecture. Um, the previous generation architectures were limited to a 384 core design and variations actually on clock speeds. Uh, where with this generation that's not what we're going to be looking at. Now the real purpose is actually bringing this GPU to the market is to kind of help solidify the mid-range or the sweet spot of what a lot of gamers are looking at, which is really focusing at that high-resolution 1080p, but while maintaining kind of all your eye candy. So what we're going to be discussing is actually what we have right here, our ASUS GTX 560 Ti 448 Edition, and some of the unique characteristics that this card has, such as our super alloy power design, in terms of the VR power componentry, also our DirectCU2 uh, heat sink and fan assembly, and even our latest generation of VGA software GPU tweak, which allows us to have advanced monitoring, control, recording, and even overclocking abilities. So we're going to go ahead and first start off with actually a little bit of overview of the external packaging, some of the unique characteristics regarding the card, and then we'll go ahead and actually jump into the unboxing. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at what we have right here. So see right here, we've got the GTX 560 Ti uh, 448. Um, one of the callouts that we can actually see right here is, is that the unit comes with a different uh, type of memory configuration. Your standard GTX 560 Ti's come with 1024, approximately one gigabyte worth of memory. These cards actually come equipped with 1.280, so 1.28 uh, gigabytes in terms of the memory. Now that's going to be advantageous at a little bit higher resolutions where with sometimes the lower end cards like a 550 or even uh, the standard uh, GTX 560, you might be limited in terms of running at a 1080p resolution, but also incorporating advanced anti-aliasing. Um, and anti-aliasing is, is a key technology that can help clean up your image and reduce jaggedness in terms of your polygons or your images that are on screen. So this is a great feature in terms of helping solidify what we discussed in terms of having all your image quality, but while still maintaining a high resolution. So uh, outside of that, of course, we have the 448 cores versus the previous 384 cores. Um, that gives us the advantage of also just being able to keep a higher level of image quality consistently present within gameplay and improving uh, not necessarily maximum frame rate, which would be improved, but minimum frame rate, which is really kind of the key attribute in terms of gameplay experience. So uh, with those kind of items noted, let's go ahead and actually jump into the box and take a look and see what we have here. Okay, so as you can see right here, we've got our normal packaging. So of course it comes uh, with a, our high quality foam inserts here to go ahead and make sure to protect everything. We're going to go ahead and remove the card. We'll touch on that guy in a second. We're actually going to go ahead and jump onto some of the accessories first. So one. We've got our extended length SLI ribbon, so this is great, or SLI bridge. Um, this has been specifically designed because, of course, our cards are equipped with our DirectCU2 heatsink design, uh, which is a triple slot design, so this allows you to go ahead and still be able to run two of the cards. Now, one thing to consider is that uh, there is a little bit of a difference in terms of SLI compatibility regarding the GTX 560 Ti 448s, is that they actually do support three-way configurations unlike your previous GTX 560 Ti's, which were limited two-way uh, two configurations. We also have a DVI to VGA adapter for you guys that are still using legacy panels. And then we have our standard PCIe power connection to Molex power adapter. So those are your three main accessories that we have included in here. Now we also do have actually a software uh, and manual guide installation disk. Now you do want to make sure to actually keep a hold of this guy. While you're definitely going to want to go over to NVIDIA.com and download the latest detonator drivers, uh, GeForce drivers that are available, um, you actually do want to use this disk to actually reference the latest version of GPU Tweak, which is our actually software utility to control and monitor your graphics card. So we can see right here, we've got our actual GTX 560 Ti 448. And one of the first telltale signs that we can see in terms of it being different than the reference design, is reference design is actually going to be a two slot type card. So we can see right here, this is actually a triple uh, slot card. Now the main reason why we've incorporated this type of design is it allows us to utilize a much larger heat sink and fan assembly. And the main reason why we do that is for one, it's going to give us superior temperature performance, but it's also going to allow us to have larger actually diameter fans 
with using larger diameter fans, we can actually increase the airflow rate, and that's also going to allow us to run these at a lower RPM rate, so ultimately giving you cooler temperatures, but also going to be significantly quieter, especially under gaming load. In, in most situations, even with running the most demanding games, uh, take for instance like Battlefield 3, um, Batman Arkham City, you know, anything you want to pretty much throw out this card, you're going to be in most situations probably not exceeding about 25 to 25, 27% of the actual fan's maximum rotation. What that really comes down to is, is that you're going to have a almost inaudible operation of the graphics card. Most situations you're going to probably be hearing other items in your system, not the GPU, which is great because it's not going to detract from the gameplay experience. So if we go ahead and start a little bit of a 360 degree tour here, let's take a look here at the front of the card. So in the front of the card, we have all our display outputs. We can see right here, we've got two uh, DVI ports, and we have our, our dual link support as well, so that's going to be great for standard 1080p monitors as well as high resolution panels, like 30 inch panels. We also then have our uh, display port connection, and we have our HDMI connection. So this is giving us a little bit more flexibility in standard reference designs, which are usually just going to be your standard dual DVI, but with us utilizing a triple slot design, we're able to offer you pretty much all active display types that are available on the market. So whether you're a display port user, HDMI, or DVI, you're covered. And of course, we have the ventilated grill, so that allows us to go ahead and exhaust some of the actual hot air coming from within the actual card, as well as the actual ambient area, and go ahead and exhaust outside the system. Moving over to the other side of the card, we can see that we have our standard SLI uh, fingers. These are your connection points for running an SLI configuration on the system. We then have dual six-pin PCIe power connections. And then we can also see that we actually have a sustainer bracket. The sustainer bracket does two things. One, it helps us be a little bit more effective in terms of the dissipation from heat from the backside of the card but it also actually helps to provide us better rigidity and better strength for the card, especially because we're using a larger fan and heat sink assembly. So we're helping to minimize on the torsion uh, or the twisting effect that can occur when sometimes you use a larger GPU. So we're helping to counteract that uh, with this bracing mechanism. So that's a, that's a nice plus and a nice detail in terms of considering the type of non-reference solution that we're bringing to market here. Uh, when we move over to this side of the card, we don't necessarily see anything here, but we have gone ahead and rounded the actual edges uh, on this end of the card to allow for a little bit easier installation uh, in terms of the length of certain chassis. Inside of the card, pretty straightforward, you have your standard by 16 PCIe physical connection. So you're good to go there. Now from here, what we're actually going to do is uh, take a look at the inside of the card. So we've already previously dismantled an actual GTX 560, and we're going to take a look and see what actually the VRM assembly looks like, as well as the actual the fan and heat sink assembly. All right, so right here, we've got actually our card. Now we've uh, previously gone through the actual process of dismantling it, which is a very, very simple process. If we actually flip this card over, we're going to see that there's actual four points where you would have four screws. Uh, example, one of those screws would be actually right here. And all we need to do is just unscrew that, then from there slightly twist, lift out, and you're good to go. So we're actually going to take a look at something that might be easily overlooked. We actually want to directly talk about the back plate right here, and something that actually we're going to see directly here in the center of the back plate. And this is actually a prodigalizer. Um, this is what you refer to as an actual capacitor. It's just a new type of capacitor. Now what's unique in terms of ASUS's implementation is we're pretty much the only vendor that has spent time at really effectively incorporating a prodigalizer design. We were the first vendor to actually ever utilize these in high-end componentry with not only our graphics card but also our motherboards. And the key to our implementation is that we're not interested in kind of sprinkling a whole bunch of them out here on the board where they're not actually effective because the, the actual distance to the actual area that's going to be provided power is key. So what we've done is we actually have what's called our SAP cap, our super alloy power or per digitalizer, and it's actually directly behind the GPU. So we can see right here, here's the, here's the actual SAP cap. When we were to flip over, we see right on the other side is the actual GPU. And this is key positioning. It's technically the most complicated way in terms of implementing it because you have a large amount of complexity with the GPU directly on the other side and the amount of traces that everything entails, but this allows for the most efficient conduction of capacitance and power. So capacitance is that stored up current so that when we're potentially pushing the car to those higher clock speeds, right? So we have a base clock speed here of about 732 megahertz. We want to start pushing the car to 850 megahertz, 875, even 900 megahertz and higher. When we're having those swings from 2D level or idle level performance clock modes, and we want to kick it into 3D mode, and we want to be able to maintain those clock frequencies at a higher level, 
voltage, reliability, consistency, and power delivery are all key at helping to ensure that strong level of overclocking performance. And that's what this is really offering to you. So just like the other componentry that we're going to be noting here in terms of our super alloy power, this SAP cap, uh, not only implemented, but also implemented in the correct and ideal location, is really helping to provide you a higher level of overclocking headroom and, and ensure better reliability and better stability. So we've got a, definitely a lot going on here. Uh, in the actual center, we have our actual IHA, uh, so the integrated heat spreader in the actual um, die or GPU package itself. So this is our GTX 560 Ti 448. And then we can see around there we actually have the BGA packages for memory. So that's our 1.280 gigabytes worth of memory. Now what ASUS has brought to the table in terms of bringing some unique characteristics is the actual custom design of our PCB assembly. So one of those key elements is one, we can see right here that we've actually put an actual heatsink assembly directly over the MOSFETs and the drivers for this card. Now that's important because one, it helps to minimize any type of overheating, especially under extended gaming sessions and over the duration of the lifespan of the card. But also as we're overclocking the card, your MOSFETs and your drivers are generally going to be the hottest operating parts of the entire card, uh, excluding the actual GPU. And us putting an actual VRM heatsink directly over this is going to help to give us actually better overclocking ability because we're keeping this area more efficient in terms of its operation. So this is a great plus and this is a nice kind of a additional touch fact not a lot of vendors necessarily think about. Now looking at the actual rest of the componentry that we have here, we can see that we have what's called our super alloy power uh, VRM components. So here we have our super alloy power chokes. Uh, these are actually very high quality chokes that they're actually kind of a, like a concrete based design. So they're made under extreme pressure and extreme temperature. So they allow us to actually run at better operational efficiency, giving better power they're overall a more efficient part in terms of the choke design and they also help to minimize on noise output especially when under load so this is a really high quality choke design uh, uh, above the standard reference component and that also goes in tail uh, and goes in tow with our actual capacitors uh, capacitors the MOSFETs and the chokes all comprise our super alloy power initiative so they're all made under that extreme temperature into that extreme pressure design using high quality metallurgic process to go ahead and, have, and give us the best quality components that we can put here. So at the end of the day what that really means is that we're just providing you a better class of part to give you better operational efficiency, means lower temperature, longer lifespan, and overall more headroom in terms of the power delivery that we can offer to the hard card for overclocking purposes. So we've got once again super alloyed caps, super alloy chokes, and then the MOSFETs underneath here. Now we've gone ahead and also done some protective design implementations as well. We can see right here we actually have some fuses here in the corner. This is a special ASUS design exclusive well as that we call fuse protection. Um, this is kind of like a fail-safe mechanism to help to minimize any type of damage that can occur to the GPU and to the card from uh, let's say an over voltage or an over current potential issue uh, where potentially your power supply or surge uh, protector or, or different things that you might not have in place might not be there to potentially have this card not fail from like I said a spike, a surge, sag, different things like that that can occur with variances in, uh, in power when it's being supplied to the card. So that's a nice plus as well. Now, looking at the actual card itself, one of the other things that you might not readily see, um, but in terms of the actual card, we do actually have a special bonding process between the GPU and the actual PCB, which is actually called our GPU guard. And this is actually a special glue bonding process that helps to give better rigidity and better support between the actual GPU and the PCB itself. Now, the reason why that's key is, of course, with the GPU, as it goes through a heating and cooling cycle, this actually kind of slightly expands and contracts and expands and contracts. And over time, actually, it can fatigue the surrounding area and the traces to where the card can actually potentially fail. This can also get exacerbated depending on the size of the heat sink assembly. And if the vendor hasn't kept these things in mind, you could actually kind of be extending uh, the likelihood of a failure. Um, so for us, we, we take these additional kind of design initiatives to make sure that you have a long running reliable component. So moving from here in terms of the onboard design component differences, we're going to go ahead and actually jump over to the actual DirectCU2 heatsink fan assembly and take a look what we're doing there. So here we've got our DirectCU2 and uh, we can see this is a very, very beefy cooler. So we've got our large uh, fans that we have here, two of them that are active in terms of the rotation. And if we go ahead and flip them over right here, we can take a look at our entire heat pipe and heat sink assembly. So you can see here that we have our five flattened heat pipes that are making direct contact with that IHS or that GPU. So that allows for really efficient um, 
uh, heat conduction between the actual GPU directly into the heat sink assembly and then cool by our large fans. So this allows us to have really good temperature performance uh, whether it's at idle or whether it's at gaming load and also help to ensure a quiet level of operation once again whether it's idle or whether it's at gaming load. Now some of the nice points that we have here as well is as noted here we've got uh, two separate portions in terms of the fan assembly and this allows us to essentially um, focus in at effectively cooling two different parts of the heat sink assembly as opposed to having one large unified assembly where we might have to have uh, more issues in terms of actively cooling and maintaining solid temperature performance so this is why we have kind of this split heat sink design but yet we have the unified heat, heat pipe assembly so this kind of gives you a little bit of an overview uh, regarding the direct CU2 heat pipe assembly design so that overall uh, kind of gives us some of the performance characteristics regarding uh, DirectCE 2, Super Alloy Power, and GTX 560. Overall, the segmentation for this card is really going to be for somebody that's looking for a sweet spot in gaming. You're looking at 1080p gaming, you're looking for a high grade of tessellation performance, and you're also going to be maybe considering 3D vision support. Uh, this makes a great card for those guys that are first interested in maybe incorporating um, 3D vision profile, whether it's going to be for like 3D Blu-ray or for 3D gaming. Uh, otherwise, when you pair it up with, uh, with a secondary card, you can even actually extend to have performance over that uh, of even the highest end single GPU parts. So it's a very robust solution and especially considering the overclocking potential that we have with our GPU tweak and our super alloy power, you could even extend uh, the core clock fre frequency from the current 732 megahertz to uh, even close to about 875, even 900 megahertz under full gaming load and even getting you up to GTX 570, even GTX 580 levels of performance. So for you enthusiasts, tweakers and tuners out there, uh, it's definitely kind of the sweet spot card to have. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments or feedback, make sure to drop them here on the page and always, uh, if you enjoy the videos, make sure to subscribe. So thank you.